the beginning of the service, I invited you to think about some words of encouragement that your mother has shared with you throughout the years. And I said that if you'd like to share that, you have a chance to do that now. Did anybody think of some words of encouragement that your mother shared with you? Yes, Loretta. Oh, I love that. It was very nice. It is very nice to be important, but it's much more important to be nice. That's a great one. We'll have to remember that one. Write that down, somebody. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Nita. My mother always told us um, that kindness will take you where money can't. Kindness will take you where money can't. That's true. That is true, I believe. Good. Any, anything else? Any words of encouragement? Remember to say those magic words. Please and thank you. Very good. I think all of our mothers uh, drop that into our heads, right? Remember those magic words, please and thank you. David. My mother was a wonderful Christian lady who was raised in the Methodist Church. And uh, one of the things she always told me, So those encouraging words that she loved you and your brother no matter what. And I'm teaching you um, the words of the gospel through music. How wonderful. Good. Anybody else think of some encouraging words? Emma, go ahead. part stop look and listen before you cross the street <laughs> I love that I don't know if I've heard that before but I think stop look and listen is great advice for a lot of things in life right <laughs> very good any anyone else anyone else yes Barbara I, I've said this before but she always used to tell me to have friends who must be one. Mm, to have friends, you must be one. Good, good. Excellent. Anybody else have one? Good. You know, I think that uh, on this day we reflect and we think about uh, our mothers and our grandparents and uh, other relatives that were important in our um, nurturing and, and in helping us to learn. And I think that all of us I can remember a words of encouragement that our mothers gave to us um, during times when maybe we were very discouraged, uh, at times when maybe um, we had lost hope. And, and sometimes um, something as simple as be true to yourself um, um, reverberates in our ears, you know, when something is going on and, and we think, that just doesn't feel like me. And we think, hmm, maybe I better be myself. My mother always said, you know, what goes around comes around. <laughs> so that often helped me remember uh, to stop and look and listen before I acted or before I said something that uh, I might not uh, be happy about later on when it came back. <laughs> right? Also, perhaps you can remember um, some acts of love that your mother did for you or some acts of sacrifice. You've heard me speak a lot about my mother and what a great baker she was, and I talked about her wooden spoon. Uh, but this week, as I was reflecting on Mother's Day, I remembered a story that I probably haven't shared with very many people. And um, it's a story that happened when I was in elementary school. Um, my brother and I, of course, are twins, so we used to um, walk to and from school. Uh, and. Uh, it wasn't too far, probably only five or six blocks. Um, but I remember one year, five or six blocks seemed like a long way, Lois, um, because 
I'm not sure what grade I was, uh, maybe second or third, something like that. There was another girl in my class. I'll never forget her name, Deanna. And uh, Deanna, she didn't like me. And I don't really know why, but she was kind of a bully. Uh, and sometimes on the playground, she would get after me and try to pull my grades or something like that. Um, but Deanna, I could handle. It was Deanna's big brother that I was really afraid of. Um, he was in the junior high, seventh or eighth grade, and he was a great big guy. And uh, after school, um, somehow um, they would team up and all the way home, those five or six blocks, um, um, they would uh, be bothering me, trying to steal my lunchbox or pull my braids or take my coat or those kind of things. And you know, my twin brother was with me, but doggone it, he just wasn't too much help, you know? Sometimes um, he would stay and kind of try to defend my honor, and other times he would be gone like the wind, leaving me there to struggle on my own. Now most of the time, about halfway home, uh, they would stop and, and go down the other street so I knew the rest of the way I should be okay. And some days when we left school, they weren't anywhere in sight, and I would breathe a sigh of relief and think, oh, I'm home free today, Renee. And then what do you think would happen? Out of the bushes, they would jump and ambush me, and I'd be like, oh, no. Now, you know, we'd come home, and, and uh, um, my mom would see that I had a, a skinned knee or a bloody elbow, and so, of course, she would ask me what happened, and so we would say, oh, you know, Deanna and her big brother. So my mom tried to do all the things that mothers do, like call the teacher, talk to the principal, even call the mother, but no one really seemed to care to do anything, and I remember um, one day, um, things had gotten a little rough. I think they might have taken my coat, and I had a bloody knee. My brother had left me, abandoned me there, <laughs> and, uh, and they had continued um, all the way up to my block, which usually didn't happen. And um, so we got about to the middle of the block, and, um, and then um, I heard um, uh, my mother's voice, and I looked up, and my mother was leaning out the front door, with a Louisville slugger in her hand, a baseball bat. Well, it did the trick. All three of us stopped dead in our tracks. I had never seen my mother wield the baseball bat like that. Oh my goodness. She was a great ball player, but you know, she didn't even have to come out the door. She just sort of waved it around a little and they were gone. And you know what? They never bothered me again. You knew that, right, Emma? They never bothered me again. Now, I was still standing there in shock because that was not like my mother at all. I mean, she was a little bit of a tomboy. You know, she liked to wear jeans around the house and she liked to mow the lawn because it had to be just a certain way. But anytime she went out of the house, she was a proper woman, you know, with a, a skirt or at least culottes <laughs> and uh, lipstick. So I was very surprised with this kind of behavior, but you know what? She had had enough, and she wanted to let them know that uh, they weren't supposed to be doing that kind of thing. They shouldn't pick on her kids anymore. You know, it reminds me that sometimes we have to have courage. As we look at our scripture passage of the day, Paul begins the passage as he does many of his letters uh, by saying, I am remembering you. I'm remembering you in my thoughts, and I'm remembering you in my prayers. Today, we're remembering our mothers and our families and those that uh, have given their time and energy to nurture us, and we remember them in our thoughts and our prayers. But Paul goes on in this letter uh, in just a few sentences to say some very powerful things. The first thing that he says is that he wants and is praying that God would open the eyes of our heart. In the scripture it says, open uh, 
our hearts and help us to receive enlightenment, help us to understand. So Paul is saying that he wants us to have the courage to see, to see beyond the surface, to see down underneath to what's really going on. You know, that's a gift because um, oftentimes when we see a child acting out, we know that something else must be going on. Maybe they had a really rough day. Not only a child, <laughs> but an adult as well, right? But also, uh, Paul is saying that we need to be able to, um, to try to understand what Scripture is telling us. To be able to have the courage to really see what is going on. Next, he says that we need to have the courage to believe. In this passage, it reminds us that we serve a powerful God, a God who created the universe. Not only that, a God who sent his son, Jesus, that we might have an example to follow, that we might have guidance and direction and teaching in our life. But more importantly, that he died on the cross for us, that he was resurrected, and on this day, that he ascended into the Father. Paul reminds us that we need to have the power to believe. Because in this day and age, sometimes it's difficult to believe. We live in a very secular world. We live in a world that says, you know, some of those things may not be so. We live in a world of cynicism. We live in a world of doubt. We live in a world of questioning. Now, it's not bad to question, and it's certainly not bad to doubt. In fact, I think it helps our faith to grow stronger and deeper. But, as Christians, we're saying that we have the courage to believe the teachings of Scripture. And it says that if we can believe that God is powerful enough to do some of those things, then certainly... God is powerful enough to act in our lives. You know, sometimes we read the words of Scripture, and there's kind of a disconnect. We think, yeah, well, that's fine, but what does it have to do with me? In this passage, it has everything to do with us, because it's helping us to realize that we have the power not only to believe the words, but to experience the transformation in our own lives. Now, does that mean that our lives will be easy? No. No, that's right, Lois. Does that mean that we're not going to have struggles? No. Does that mean that we're not going to have difficulties? No. But it means that we're going to believe that we're not alone, that Jesus is with us every step of the way, giving us the courage and the strength that we need to keep believing. And finally, the courage to act. We need to act on those beliefs. It's not enough to see God's hand at work. It's not enough even to believe that God's power is at work. We have to have the courage to take action, to put our faith into action, to act on what we believe. Now, what does that mean? Well, it might be as simple as speaking words of encouragement to someone who desperately needs to hear a word of encouragement. It might be a text, it might be an email, it might be a written note, or a phone call, or an invitation to coffee, or it might be a prayer, but it's doing something tangible. I don't know about you, but there are many times when I am thinking of someone and maybe I even went so far as to buy a card for them, but somehow it just never gets mailed. And it sits there on my counter, and I think, huh, I have good intentions, but I didn't actually follow through. Sometimes I feel that still, small voice of the Spirit urging me because I can't get someone off of my mind. And I know, Lois, I know that means that I should give them a call. Because every time I do, there's a reason that I should call. And sometimes it's revealed in the conversation. But sometimes I don't 
take that extra step and give a call. And then what happens? Later on, I find out they were really going through a rough time. The Spirit was nudging me and urging me and, and telling me that I should make a connection, but I was too busy in that moment. So it was a missed opportunity. So today we're reminded that the Holy Spirit is with us. Next week we're going to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we see the Spirit in our lives as a guide, as a, 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 someone that nudges us, someone that helps us to make the right decisions, someone that uh, kind of shows us right from wrong, that conscience, if you will, within us, helping us to see the way. And so today we are reminded that we must have the courage to see a little deeper. We must have the courage to believe with all of our hearts. And we must have the courage to act on our faith. And when we do that, uh, we know that many of the things that our mothers taught us will all fit into place. Would you join me for a word of prayer? Oh, loving God, we thank you so much for the time to come apart from our daily tasks and activities to worship you. We pray that you would help us to be able to see. We pray that you would open the eyes of our heart. Pray that you would help us to encourage one another. We pray that you would help us to believe in the power that you have. And we pray that you would help us to trust the Holy Spirit and to act every day. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.